In this tutorial we're going to go through some search engine optimization tips. So we know by now that SEO is the process of ensuring a website can be found in a search engine's natural or unpaid search results for words and for phrases relevant to what the site is offering. So SEO fundamentals then We've talked in the previous video that the basics of SEO are that you include page titles that are accurate and unique and that you also make use of the description and keywords meta tags. And here's an example of doing that there behind the scenes in your view page source of the website. The next SEO tip then is to improve the structure of URLs. If you consider the following URLs, which is better and why? So if you look at the first, it's natural to assume that a user might have difficulty remembering it or creating a link to it because it has subdirectories that are unwieldy with the, ne the letters and the numbers there. And then the second one, the URL here is easier to remember or to link to and it contains relevant words that inform a user or search engine what the target page is about before following the link. The benefits of improving site structure are that it leads to improved organization of your site, better crawling of your documents by search engines, and more user-friendly URLs for those that want to link to your content. Making sure URLs are as simple as possible can help search engines crawl through your URL structure. So the second example here is best. Another SEO tip is to make your site easy to navigate. So create a link structure for your website that makes it easy for users to quickly find the content they are looking for. Easy navigation of a website can help search engines understand what content the webmaster or the person who's in charge of the website thinks is important. So here's an example of a directory structure for a website. So you'll see that everyone, and this one has a, a home or a root page, and which usually has and is the most visited page on the site and it's the starting place from which most visitors will navigate. So thought should be given into how visitors will navigate from the home page to a page containing more specific content. So you'll see from the root you have the about page and images, news and so on. So these are subdirectories on your web site that might contain HTML pages um, and information relevant to the site there. So the use of text links will also make your site easier for users and search engines to navigate or th crawl through and understand your site. Another way to make your site easier to navigate and to be crawled by search engines is to create sitemap files. A HTML sitemap can help users easily find content that they are looking for. It's a simple page in your site to display the hierarchical listing of the pages on your website. The benefit of having a HTML sitemap is that visitors may visit this page if they are having problems finding pages on your site. So that's one type of sitemap file, but the, another type is an XML sitemap. And an XML sitemap can help search engine spiders or web crawlers find pages on your site. The open source sitemap generator script, which Google helped to create, helps you create an XML sitemap for your site. So it's a specific tool that helps you do this. Another SEO tip is to optimize your content and you can do this in a number of different ways. You can offer quality content and services and to do this you need to write well-written text that's useful, that's easy to read, it's compelling 
and easy to follow. When a user recognises a quality well written site, it's very likely that they will direct others to it and they'll use it again and again. So this can be through word of mouth or through social networking such as forums or blogs, Facebook, Twitter, email and so on. So this quality content and services approach it's going to help build your site's reputation. Another um, thing to do is to split your content into logic blocks of information and it's going to make it easier and faster for users to find related content. Write unique and new content to attract new visitors and retain existing ones. Spend some time thinking about the kind of words a user might search for to find related content on your site. These keywords are going to differ from person to person. For example, a professional athlete might search for a far more specific search term than a regular person who trains only once or twice a month. So anticipating and accounting for these differences in search behaviour while writing your content using a good mix of keyword phrases can lead to positive results. So two things that Google has that will help you in this optimising content tip are Google AdWords and Google Webmaster Tools. Google AdWords provides a useful keyword tool to help you discover new keyword variations and it also lets you see the approximate search volume for each keyword. On the other hand, Google Webmaster Tools provides you with the top search queries for which your site appears and the ones that led to the most users to your site. Another tip for optimizing content is to use correct heading tags. Heading tags H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, one being the largest, are used as a visual cue to present structure on a web page. Careful use of these tags can effectively focus the user's attention on relevant sections of information on a web page. If a main heading made use of the H1 tag, its subheading would then have a smaller H2 tag. Plan out the content of the page and decide on the best and most appropriate places to insert headings. So this section here shows the main heading and subheading within the body content of a document. Improving the anchor text is another way to optimize content. An anchor text is the clickable text that appears on links which is placed between anchor tags. So the anchor tag is the a uh, href equals. The following anchor text accurately describes the content on one of the tennis pages on the fictional site myrackets.ie. So this anchor text informs the user and search engines what the linked page contains. The text itself is short, concise and descriptive. So we see here the anchor text, the a href equals. Another tip for SEO is when optimizing content, optimize the use of images. So use the alt attribute to specify an alternative text for an image if for some reason it cannot be displayed. If there is a problem displaying the image, the alt attribute will provide the user and search engines with some information about the image in place of the image itself. Sometimes an image is intended as a link and if when you use the alt attribute that also can be treated as a link. So in the case where an image cannot be displayed for some reason in a browser, a link from the alt attribute will still work. So that's another good reason for using the alt attribute. It's recommended to store images in one location on your domain, um, for example myrex.ie slash images, 
to simplify the path to the images. .jpg, .gif, .ping and .bmp are file type extensions supported by most browsers. When accessing an image, ensure that the file name and file type are case sensitive to the actual file name and file type is sa as saved in your image location within the hierarchy. A separate XML sitemap file can also be made of your image files to provide search engines with more information about the images on your site. The next SEO tip is how you manage crawlers or web spiders. So robots.txt is a file that you can create or generate that sits on the root directory of your site. The contents of this file will tell search engines, spiders, which part of the site should not be crawled and how to interact with indexing your content. An example of contents of a robots.txt file is here and this shows it informs all compliant search engine bots not to access and crawl the content under slash images or any URL whose path begins with slash about. So there's the keyword disallow, disallow and the star for any user agent. So that's what a sample robots.txt file would contain. So certain parts of your site may not be of use to users if returned in search results following a search query. As such, robot.txt is a way of preventing site content appearing in search results. A more secure method for restricting access to, case, to sensitive content is to encrypt the content or to password protect it with .ht access. Another technique is to avoid spam comments. And some ways of doing this are using rel equals nofollow for links. So when you include that, if an untrusted site exists and you don't want to damage your own site's reputation by linking to it, rel equals nofollow can be used um, and it's placed inside the links anchor tag. So here's the example then of rel equals nofollow placed between the links anchor tag. For example, here is a site, dubiousite.ie, we're saying rel is no follow and the link is spam comment. So not passing your reputation onto a link becomes very useful on areas of your site that are open for visitors' comments. For example, blogs with public commenting enabled or guest books and forums. A user could insert a link within a blog that you could potentially damage your own site's reputation. By using rel equals nofollow it instructs some search engines that a link should not influence the link target's ranking in the search engine's index. It's intended to diminish the effectiveness of certain kinds of internet advertising. Search and algorithms depend on the number of links to a website when determining which websites should be listed in what order in their search results for any given search term. CAPTCHA codes are another way of avoiding spam comments. The term CAPTCHA stands for Completely Automated Public Turing test and it's used to tell computers and humans apart. So completely, completely automated public Turing test to tell computers and humans apart. And it's a program that protects websites against bots by generating tests that humans can pass but current computer programs cannot. 
It includes applications for practical security, such as preventing comment spam in blogs, protecting website registration, ensuring only humans can register and not bots, and protecting email addresses from scrapers, requiring humans to solve CAPTCHA before revealing an email address. So the next tip for SEO is quite a large one, is for promotions and analysis. So in SEO, link building is one of the very top tasks required for search ranking and traffic success. A large portion of search engines algorithms are said to be attributed to link related factors. Search engines can analyze the popularity of websites and pages based on the number and popularity of pages linking to them. Trust, spam and authority are other metrics that are also taken into account. Trustworthy sites tend to link to other trusted sites, while sites that are spammy receive very few links from trusted sources. Growing the link profile of a site is important to gaining traction, attention and traffic from search engines. Professional SEOs consider the following in order for search engines to assign value to links and to a site's link profile. Popularity. The more links to your site from a site that's popular and important, the easier it will be to earn the trust of search engines. Anchor text. Optimizing the use of anchor text is one of the strongest signals this, the engines use in rankings. If scores of links point to a page with the right keywords, that page has a very good probability of ranking well for the targeted phrase in that anchor text. Use short but meaningful meaningful link or anchor text that provides some information when read out of context, explains what the link offers, doesn't talk about mechanics and is not a verb phrase. Another thing that professional SEOs consider um, in order for search engines to assign value to links and to a site's link profile are earning trust ranking it's thought that around 60% of internet pages are spam, so search engines have to sort through irrelevant contents and, and in so doing, use mechanisms for measuring trust. The link neighborhood is also important, so a website that links to spam is likely to itself be spam, and furthermore has often many spam sites linking back to it. Search engines can understand the link neighborhood in which your website exists, so be selective with the sites you link to and with those you attempt to earn links from. SEOs also try to keep links popular, so by keeping your site's links popular and earning additional links over time, search engines can gauge the current popularity and relevance of your site's links and so you, you will get a higher ranking the more popular your links are in the, in the search results page. So social sharing is also important, so SEOs are going to spend time thinking about that, uh, SEO professionals. So social media sites such as Facebook and Twitter have made a vast increase in the amount of content shared on the web and its effects on search engines in recent years. Sites built around user interaction and sharing have made it easier to match interested groups of people up with relevant content. Someone with a large social following and who shares a lot of information is more likely to have that material promoted in search results. Social shares such like uh, tweets and pluses and likes, they're not the same as links but are noticed by search engines and can affect search engine rankings and the popularity of your content. Another SEO tip is to bear in mind 
that SEO for mobile phones is also relevant and necessary. So mobile sites should also be configured so that they can be indexed properly by search engines. The format of mobile sites is different from desktop sites and in addition to this mobile sites require a level of expertise so that they are search friendly. To notify Google of mobile sites, create a mobile site map and submit it to Google. So for those with a, both a mobile and a desktop version of a site, it's important that the correct version appears on the device for which it was intended. If a mobile user or web crawler accesses the desktop version on a mobile site, they can be redirected to the corresponding mobile version of the same page. If, on the other hand, a desktop user or web crawler accesses a mobile version of a site on the desktop, Google will include a link to the desktop version from the mobile version page. The user will then have the option of switching over to the desktop site without being automatically redirected by Google. In many cases, a mobile site will not provide as much functionality as its desktop counterpart. And so these links are a useful way of navigating from mobile to desktop sites at the discretion of the user. This diagram here shows an example of how a page can change format based on the user agent. Google uses Googlebot for web searches and Googlebot Mobile for mobile searches. So the same URL can be used for both mobile and desktop users without the need for redirects. In this case, the content or format will change slightly according to the user agent. In this case, a mobile search and a desktop search will cause the same URL to appear. Desktop users will see a desktop version of the content and the mobile users will see a mobile version of the content, all from the same URL. So this concludes the SEO tips tutorial. How many of these SEO tips can you recall?